today we're going to take a look at section 1.2, which is function behavior and end behavior limits. Um, and then if and when we have the time to move forward, we will continue into section 1.3. Okay? So to start with, um, when we're talking about functions, we can talk about the direction that a function is headed. So if we talk about its direction as being increasing, then that means that as the input values increase, the output values increase. And we always look at graphs from left to right. So as we're looking from left to right, it will look like such a graph is going uphill, like this. If the direction is decreasing, then as the input values increase, the output values will decrease. And likewise, it will look like it's going downhill from left to right. And then if your value is constant, what will happen is as your value, input values increase, the output values remain the same, so it will look flat. That's what a constant looks like. All right, am I good to switch to the next screen? Yeah? Okay. Another description of curves talks about, or of equations, would be curvature. A graph that opens upward is called concave up. And we have the idea that it holds water. So it looks like kind of like a bowl. And the reality is it doesn't even have to look like a whole bowl. It can look like a half of a bowl or a sideways bowl. So it doesn't have to legitimately hold water. But it has this feel of opening upward. Concave down is exactly the opposite. It has the feeling of opening downward or dumping water. And again, it doesn't have to look like the whole bowl. It can look like just half of the bowl and still be concave down. If a graph is neither, it means it's flat. And I don't necessarily mean flat like constant over here, right, flat. It's just a line. It doesn't have any curve to it. So it can't be concave up or concave up because that talks about curving and lines don't curve. And our last component on this slide is the word inflection point. An inflection point is a place where a graph changes concavity. Not every graph does. But some do. So let me draw you an example. If you look before my red dot, the graph is opening upward. It's concave up. And if you look after my red dot, where the graph is curving downward, that's concave down. So this point right here is the inflection point. And there will come a point where we will actually find those um, very, very specifically. But there's also going to be some points where we're going to sort of eyeball it, approximate where we think that's happening before we get there.
All right. This is actually in your book. It's actually on page 20, and it's problem number five. Um, this one wants us to identify the direction, right? Increasing, decreasing, constant. Concavity, concave up, concave down, or neither of the function. And if the graph changes direction or concavity to indicate where it happens. Okay, there's asking a lot of information about this little graph. So let's do one thing at a time. Let's first talk direction. So direction is increasing, decreasing. Increasing. Okay, so it starts out increasing. I totally agree. Do you guys agree? Yeah. So when we write down what it's doing, it is definitely increasing. But where is it increasing? Yeah, until we get to B. Right there at that spot, it stops increasing, doesn't it? So negative infinity, all the way to the far left, all the way until I get to B. And at B, it changes direction. Okay? So there's nothing specific on how we have to write this right now. So you can write that in words. It's increasing before B. And then it changes to decreasing. Okay. There's other ways that you could look at that. Your back of your book might do this. It might tell you that it's increasing from negative infinity to B, like that, and an interval. It might write it that way. And that it's decreasing from B to infinity. Okay? They didn't tell you how you had to write it, so there's going to be some options here. Okay, so the next thing is that we're going to talk about concavity. So looking over here at this graph, tell me something you see somewhere. A lot going on. How about the first part of the graph, the very beginning? Right in here. It's concave down. Yeah. And I stopped right where that changed. Do you see that? From where I stop marking with that black pen and it moves further to the right, the change in concavity has happened. So it's concave up I'll just use that same interval notation from negative infinity to where. What x value does it stop being concave up at? I didn't meant to say down. I'm sorry. I just typed it. Thank you for that. Yeah, zero is right to zero. What happens after zero? It's concave up until where? It's, con it's constant, but just for a split second. It changes. Um, so unless it's actually flattened out for a significant length of time, or a visible length of time, we don't say it's constant. Um, but where does it stop being concave up? A. Yeah, they've actually done it so that you can actually see a, a value for it. It's at A. So it's concave up from 0 to A. And then what happens after A? Yeah, and I'm so glad you even said it that way. It's A to infinity. So the next part of the graph actually continues indefinitely, right? Like there's this sort of idea of continuance after that. So it is concave down, up, uh, down, up, uh, down, up, uh, down. Okay, concave down also from A to infinity. So I can actually tack that onto the part about being concave down before if you'd like. Or you can write another statement either way. Any questions on that? All right. Let's take a look at one that doesn't have a visual for it, but it has an equation instead. The percentage of people in the United States who earn at least $2,000, so between $25,000 and $150,000, that's what that $25 to $150 is telling you can be modeled, excuse me, by P of T equals 119.931 times 0.982 to the T percent. 
it asks, is, the P, is P, the function, increasing or decreasing between 25 and 150? Now, you might know from that equation what it's doing. You might. Um, it's definitely something that you learn and you talk about in a college algebra course. Um, you also might not remember um, because you may be a more visual learner or it may have been a summer um, or longer since you've had some college algebra. So if you know what it is now, that's fantastic. If you don't know, grab your calculator and I'll show you how you can use it to visualize it, okay? So we're gonna put this equation in our calculator. Where the T is, it will say X. So you're gonna put in 119.931. times 0.982 to the power of x. Not just times x, but you have to use that caret, make it to the power of x. We don't zoom six here. Um, and the reason why is because zoom six, remember, goes from negative 10 to 10, and they're telling us that we're supposed to be going from 25 to 150. All right? So hit window. You need your x min to be 25 and your x max to be 150. So start with that. Don't graph it yet. That adjusts your window for the x's. That may or may not be a good window on y, the way things are currently in your calculator. So what you do to get y in a good window is you actually hit zoom fit which is zoom zero. So hit zoom, type the number zero, and then it will automatically pick a window for Y that's good, instead of you having to play around and try and figure one out. Let me draw on the screen what it looks like so that we're all on the same page. On my calculator right now, with my window set up the way that I have, it looks like this. Does anybody look different? All right. So you tell me, is it increasing or decreasing? It's decreasing. And part B, what's the concavity? It is concave up. It has this opening upward feel to it. So what in the world do you actually have to show work-wise? Not a lot. I mean, you don't. You can do it all either from knowing what the graph visually looks like or from graphing it and seeing. There's really nothing to show. The answer is about all you're going to write down. Is that the end behavior? Do we need to draw it? Um, end behavior is the next title. Okay. Yeah, it's my next slide, so just hold tight. Okay, so are you guys okay for me to switch slides? You're just ahead of the game. You got a lot, lot to write down, actually. End behavior. So end behavior refer, refers to the behavior of the output values as the input values become large. So as X moves along the way, what's happening? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it leveling off? Is it shooting up really, really fast? What is the end behavior? And then there's some notation that I want you to be aware of. Be aware of. If you are asked or told that the limit as x approaches either positive or negative infinity is L, it means that as x gets larger, it's leveling off. It pauses and it stops. It doesn't increase any further. So it ends up looking, this is an example of one, where it flattens out like that. This is what all the people are looking for for COVID. They're looking for that flattening out. So when they talk about flattening the curve, this is what they're describing, that flattening piece. On the second one, it says the limit as X goes to positive or negative infinity if F of X is positive or negative infinity. It means that the input values get large or small without bound. 
that's currently where we still are, right? Everything's still going up. Now, likewise, you could be looking at things where everything continues to slow down and go down. Okay, that's a possibility too in certain contexts. But it means there's not any flattening out ability going on. It's continuing to increase. It doesn't even have to increase without bound fast. Like it could actually still be just doing like this, right? Where it looks kind of still, it's not as scary as the last graph I drew, but it's still going up and it's not leveling off. Okay, so that's what happens when we talk about it increasing without bound. Okay, uh, there's a lot of writing screens, so I want to make sure y'all get it. Let me pause a little longer. Okay, we have a function. The function is 1.5 to the power x. And we're going to describe the end behavior verbally. So again, for starters, you can put this in your calculator. Um, zoom 6 will be just fine. The standard, excuse me, the standard window will be just fine. And visually, it looks like this. It's a little closer to the x-axis over there, or like that. All right, so end behavior is talking about what happens when we go right forever or left forever. So let's talk about coming to the right forever, my side of the graph. If we go towards the side of the graph that I'm on, to the right side, what is the y value doing? Yes, sir. It is increasing without limit or without bound. So we're going to write that down because the first question said to describe it verbally. So number one, as x increases, y increases without bound. What happens then as x decreases? Yes, good. So it, the y is decreasing and it's limiting out at zero, right? It's flattening out at the value zero because it's the x-axis. So as x increase, decreases, excuse me, y, you can say levels off, you can say tens toward, those are some nice mathy words, tends toward zero. It's important to realize it may never actually hit zero. In fact, it wouldn't on this graph ever, but it's getting as close as it possibly can and closer and closer all the time. It's tending to zero. Limit notation. So let me just show you what the limit notation looks like. You wrote it down over on this screen. You may or may not have ever seen that kind of notation before. So here's what this looks like. The first one, number one, like the way I described it as x, right? So limit, we're going to say x, arrow, infinity, underneath limit. That's telling you that you're coming over here to the positive side forever. You have to write the function name. So our function name was f of x. And then just like Martin told us, it increases without limit. That means it goes to what value? If, yeah, if you could call it a value. It's infinity, right? It gets infinitely large. So as x approaches infinity, that is, it goes to the right forever, y approaches infinity. It goes up forever. 
So if we go the other direction and let x approach negative infinity, that means it goes to the left forever of our function, what value does it get close to? It's zero on that one. It's not negative infinity because we're talking about the y. The y is not going down forever. The y is sort of tapering off, right? It's tapering off at zero. Very good. You're right. C asks us for the equation for any horizontal asymptotes. If you'll remember, an asymptote is a line that you get really close to and typically speak, or with few exceptions, don't touch. Levels off there. And you're right. It is the line at y equals 0, where it's flattening out on the left-hand side. All right, have one more slide with a fair bit of writing, and then one more example for this section. We're about to encounter something called numerical estimation on our last problem. So these are some conventions for numerical estimation. So this is sort of your book's interpretation of this, right? So we're going to follow with what they do for consistency's sake. That way, when you're looking at the back of the book or something, you're not getting different weirdness than uh, what we've done in class. When we're estimating numerically, we are going to increment by either adding or multiplying by a constant. So it's like we're going to add 2, add 3, add 4, right? Um, I didn't say that right. We're going to add 2, add 2, add 2, add the same value every time. Or we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply by 10, and then by 10 again, and then multiply by 10 again, every single time. And we're doing so until we establish a pattern. That pattern might be, uh, it gets bigger all the time and way, way bigger every time. That's a pattern. It might be, man, it's getting really close to 130. It's not quite there, but it's getting closer and closer every single time. Use at least four estimates. show at least four decimal point locations, which will remain constant for three entries when a limit exists. Those are sort of our benchmarks for knowing we've chosen enough values to try. Try at least four, make sure they match up for enough time. Now we have a great equation. If you have a calculator, you're going to need it for the next problem. So do, you do. You do need a calculator for this particular problem for sure. This is an ugly one. It says numerically estimate the limit as t goes to infinity of 6 natural log of 10 plus t to the negative 1. Start, and it will tell you usually how it's going to want you to do it. Start at t equal 500. Increment by adding 500. Estimate to three decimal places. So lots of instructions. Let's start this way. Let's start by entering this equation, and I mean this part right here, with x in it, of course. So do I 6 natural log of 10 plus x to the negative 1 in your calculator. We're not graphing it, so don't worry about the graph. Okay? Just type it into the equation. All right, what kind of calculator are you using? Fabulous, that'll work just fine. Yeah, so put that one into y equals. And then you're going to use your table. I'm going to make sure that one more time before we use our table, because not everyone had them last time I know, and more of you at least have them this time, that our tables are set up properly. So once you get this into y equals, I just want you to hit second window. Boy, that red's hard to read. I need to avoid that one on the screen. Okay. 
in that window, you should see a thing that says table setup. Does everybody who's using this calculator see table setup? Second window, you see table setup. It should say independent ask, dependent auto. If you had yours last time, we did that together. If you didn't, you might not have remembered to do it after you left. Independent ask, dependent auto. If that's the case, now what you're going to do is go into the table, which is second graph. You may or may not have entries in the table already. If you do, you can delete them. If you don't, it doesn't matter. We're gonna put in our own entries. It tells us in this problem that we're going to start, we're gonna write down a table, that's what we're gonna do, at t equal 500. And what's our, oh, we don't have a name for it. We'll call it f of t since it doesn't give us one. And it says we're going to increment by adding 5,000. So if the first number is 500, the next number would be 5,500. What would my next number be? I know I would have to have at least four values, so I might as well write the first four down. Mm -hmm. 10,500. And then? Yeah, 15,500. Now we may need more. If we need more, we're going to go to 2,500 and 2,500 and 3,500, right? We're going to need to do all that, okay? But this might be all we need. We won't know until we put them in. So you can put these in your calculator. 500, 5,500, 10,500, 15,500. Okay, so let me write down. Don't write down what I'm writing down yet. What my screen actually shows me on my version right now is 13.817, 13.816, 13.817, 13.816, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.817, 13.
So the limit of f of t, uh, or f of x, I've used x, so I'll use x here. I used t, actually I did. t, and we'll make this a t. They just need to match, I don't really care where they are. Is 13 point what? 815, and if I use two decimal places, what will it be? 82. Okay, if you write down 13.815, I'm not going to care that much, okay? It'll be all right. Any question on that? Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Um, we need to make up a little bit of ground in terms of time, so we're going to keep lecturing. I'm going to move on to the next set. So the group work homework on this piece of paper will all become homework at the moment or the in-class work, classwork, whatever. So we won't get to the in-class in having time to work together. Um, we should next time, but we're going to start 1-3. The caveat to that, the good thing is that we're not going to finish 1-3, which means what's your homework for the weekend? Only 1-2. We will not get to 1-3 as being finished, okay? So homework for this will be due on Tuesday next week. And then I'll adjust due dates in Canvas.